Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a cooperative game set at the dawn of the Stone Age. This here is Paleo. In this game, the players are going to be working together, as I said at the beginning, in order to achieve victory. And you do that by taking actions in the game that are all on cards. This is basically a card game. Taking those actions on cards, trying to collect weapons, collect food, level up your inventions, keep your people alive. You, you, Each player is going to have uh, sort of their own tribe that they manage in the game. And ultimately, trying to get these five parts of one sort of cave painting completed. If you do that, you win. If too many bad things happen along the way, you earn these skulls, those are bad, you, you die, you, you lose the game, okay? So there you go, that's the general flow of the game. Besides that though, every time you play this, you are going to shuffle a couple of modules into the main deck, the central deck. And they're, they're letters, so A through like J. As you go later into the letters, they get a little bit harder, okay? So there's going to be some sort of evolving variety. It's not really a storyline, okay? This is not legacy. It's just sort of different scenarios you can throw in there. So there you go. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to show you what this all looks like on the table. We'll come back up after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. The first thing you want to do when you sit down to play is figure out what level of difficulty or just what level in general you want to play the game at. So you're going to be combining some specific decks of cards to make up the composition of the game. All right, so we're looking right now at level one, which is deck A plus deck B plus the base decks of cards that are always in the game. And then you'll progress through these and eventually you can just sort of mix and match them however you want to. Each one tells you a little bit of a story is somehow thematically connected. So that's what it's all about. Like B, for example, is about, uh, you know, uh, huts and building huts and staying alive in them. Um, a little bit, okay? So that's sort of the idea there. And here are those decks. You're just going to keep them separate, okay? I'm not going to... They have a letter in the top corner. I'm not going to show you all of those because, well, I want you to discover those for yourself, of course. So here's what the game looks like. We're going to have five food at the beginning. Everybody gets two of these characters. And you're going to have them in front of you. I'm just going to place my two right there, okay? And everybody would have two of these. And then if they uh, give you any of these tokens, you go ahead and grab those. I have, for example, in this case, this one gives me some uh, fur. That one gives me some rope. So I have that in my pool available to me. That tell me each one is good at something and then how many hits they can take before they die. So what are we doing in the game? We are trying to finish this cave painting, which, you know, basically symbolizes uh, surviving and thriving, before we get five skulls right here. Whichever one of these two things we finish first, we either win or lose, respectively, okay? So how does each round go? Well, each round, or each, uh, uh, I guess, uh, you know, span in the game, each chunk of the game is going to be split into a day phase and a night phase with the day phase being most of the game, and then every now and then a knife phase, okay? This deck of cards right here already has the cards from A and B shuffled into it. You are going to shuffle that up and divvy it among all of the players uh, as evenly as possible. So let's say we've got uh, three players. Everybody would get about a third of this, obviously, actually count it out, okay? And then you are good to go. You got your two people, you got your deck of cards. So here, this is the day phase. Everybody, simultaneously, is going to look at the top three cards of their deck, and they are going to pick one of these to play. You don't look at the front yet, yeah, you just look at the back. And the back gives you a potential idea of what the front might have. So for example, at one of these forests, I'm more likely to find food and wood than anything else. But it could be something different, it could even be something bad. And then you've got these, uh, which are going to be, you could gain from these, as it says there, possibly fur, possibly food. There are mountains. There are other kinds of cards, ideas and threads. And uh, this one is, it gives you, again, a hint as to what the front might be. And this is something you'll internalize just from playing the game, all right? But everybody looks at all of them, and you, you pick one to reveal. And then everyone, once they've done that, will reveal it simultaneously. This player has three of the same kind, so they'll just... Take one. By the way, the other two that you don't take, you can just put back on top. However you want. Alright, we reveal these. So I'll just put them here for now. And then we all take a look at them and we figure out what order we want to resolve these in. 
each card has at least a couple of options. So for example, let's just take a look at this one right here. It's a berry bush, okay? And the berry bush has three different actions or, or options for actions, okay? The first one says you can discard three cards from the top of your deck and then destroy this card and you're gonna get one wood, two food. Okay, to do that, you would just discard cards from here to this discard spot on this board, this cardboard, face down. They stay face down, all right? And then this one's gone, which means you put it over here in the little graveyard area on this little cardboard holder guy. The second thing, you just discard one from the top of your deck and you get one food, okay? And the last one is helping someone else. And that action's gonna be on pretty much everything, unless it's a negative card, unless it's attacking you or hurting you. And that simply means, hey, I'm gonna skip doing anything on this card to assist somebody else with my symbols and stuff, okay? So that's the first one. Let's take a look at another one. These two are fairly similar right here. Same thing at the bottom of just skipping this and helping someone at the top. There's one big action here. I need three spears, and that's a threshold. I don't spend them or anything, three spears. I'm gonna discard two cards from the top of my deck. This card goes away because I've hunted the boar. And then I get three food, one fur. Okay, however, let's say these are my cards. Neither one of these guys is, is a hunter. This was a builder. This guy has the eyeball symbol, which is for, I don't know, clarity or something. He sees things. Uh, so this is not gonna work out. Now the other players might have it and perhaps they want to help me hit these thresholds. By the way, the cards discard it always come from the player's deck from your own chunk of cards if you're the one doing this so that's not gonna happen and then this one is a little bit harder still and that's not gonna happen so right now again I don't know what these symbols for the other two players that are missing on the table would be but let's say I'm gonna just these guys are um, going to this one's gonna help this one do that let's say they have it between them okay great so both of these cards are gonna be discarded and this player is going to discard one two from the top of their deck they're going to get rid of this one over here. Then we get three food from the supply over here. We put it on our board. And one, uh, what else is there? One uh, fur, which goes to that player, the player who did the thing, okay? And these are the tokens. Uh, this fur, for example, uh, for example, besides whatever else might ask for it, you can discard it to prevent a wound. That's what it does. And all of these will come into play at one point or another and they do various things. All right, this one's just discarded. It wasn't activated. And then this one, that player, this player will do that. I'm gonna discard one, two, three over here. I'm gonna nuke this and get two fo food and one wood. And I will put that over here again in the supply. This little area holds all of our stuff together. That's it. Once that's done, then everybody is going to do it again. And we've got uh, three cards. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the mountains. Maybe I'll find some, some stone up there or something. Okay, this place takes a little... Ooh, a fire, fire camp. Okay, that means uh, normally you, like, stay home and discover something. And then over here, three wood cards. Fine, I'll just do that one. Player reveals it. This player reveals this one. And this player reveals this one. All right, ooh, look at that. That was a surprise bad card. The front is red. Wasn't expecting that to be a bad card, but it happens, right? So this is trees, and this one, I'll show you again, has very similar to that berry bush. I need to have two of those tools among my people, among my tribe, discard two cards, I get three wood. If I don't have the tools, I can just discard two cards and get one wood, or I can help somebody else. Uh, this one over here is very important, okay? That top symbol means build. I can build something, and we have this cool cardboard thing over here where you can build stuff. You always begin with the torches, you've got the, the flint or the piece of rock there, and then over here a, a spear, and it's going to be wood, stone, and both wood and stone respectively to build them, so if I want to do that I can build one of them. And I take it, I have that symbol now available to me, the torch is a one time, you have to get rid of it, but say the spear, if I get that I can now hunt a little more effectively, I have a spear so I, I always have one symbol of that. This doesn't go away unless it has that arrow that discards it, okay? So that's the first thing. The second option is just growing my tribe, second and third option. So I could just draw another character over here and take that, okay? If it has one of those icons, I take whatever it gives me right now. This one doesn't. This one can take an extra hit, which is good. So there we go. And so, and then the other one would be if you have a bunch of people, you could pay some food and still take someone or help. 
Now let's take a look at the bad card over here. The bad ones, these red ones, always or typically are going to make you make some tough choice or you can just take a hit. You just take a wound. If anybody maxes out on wounds, meaning you'd have to put one here down on the skull then this person is gone and instead we are going to just put a skull out here on this bad board, okay? So you don't want to you don't want to lose your people. You want to make sure you're keeping them alive so that you don't have to deal with that. Uh, this one says discard a torch and then trash this card and then you get a new idea which is one of these tools, you'd grab one, you'd flip it, it's something new you can build, and you'd put it on the rack. If it has tokens that accompany it, put them right there with him. In this case, this guy is a painting, and I can discard, I have to have three of those, I have to discard some food, some wood, some fur, and then trash this card, and I get to paint a piece of the cave painting, which is the goal. This is one-fifth of the game. If I can do this, I'm one-fifth of the way there. Where are the other ones? They're in this deck. They'll show up later. They're just sort of spread around where you find the rest of them, okay? So that's that's basically how that works. Now, once you're finally... Once you're done going through your deck, then you're done. You go to sleep. And everybody else, you wait till anybody else who still needs to finish, finishes. You can also, if you want to, you can call it early... Because you might have a bunch of bad cards later on, you might just say, okay, I'm going to sleep. And you just discard the rest of these, don't activate them, you get rid of them without penalty. Once everyone is asleep, you've gone through all of the cards. And then we do the night phase, okay? These would all be over here, some of them would be right there like so. The night phase, we are going to eat. We have to eat food. Every one of our people eats one. For everybody you cannot feed, you have to take one of these skulls. Uh, you keep the character, but you take this. And then secondly, you have to deal with these cards down here at the bottom, okay? And they are going to, for example, this one says, hey, you have a hut, you can sleep somewhere for the night. If you do get rid of it, great. If you don't, take a skull hit, okay? And then this one over here is, oh, you got a, this is a bountiful prey. Three food, one fur. You don't have that to pay, take a skull. And then you go to the day phase again, where you shuffle up all of this stuff. You divvy it out among the players again you go for it one more time. So again, I will remind you, your objective is this right here. Trying to build this very satisfying little puzzle right here. And if you manage to do this, look at that, how gorgeous that is. If you manage to build that before you get the five skulls, then you win the game. There you go, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, that is Paleo. Let's dig right in, okay? Overall, I really like this game. I think it's very solid. I like a lot of things about it. Is it uh, perfect? No. Uh, there's a couple of minor little things I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicky about, but overall, yes, it's good. Uh, and I really enjoy it. I'm a sucker for co-op games anyway. That's part of it, I'm sure. So let's get into it. The theme. Uh, it's interesting. It's lovely, okay? It is both very concrete. You know what's going on. These people are trying to survive. They need food. A wolf is attacking you. Whatever. It's very concrete. It's also it's also very sort of ethereal. You know, some of the cards are dreams. And some of the things that happen are just sort of... Ooh, ah, you know, um, which I like. I like that combination. It's a very romanticized world in many ways. Both brutal and romanticized. And I, I like the way that plays out in the game. Now, I will say right here, even though I'm going to get to it later on... This is one of those games in which the story, the, the theme, is very much there if you look for it past the symbols, okay? And I love some of the little moments that sort of dawned on me as I was playing. This idea of like, oh, because I smacked that wolf, now the wolf pack is coming after me. I'm just making something up. Um, but that doesn't, that's not written anywhere, you know? You just have to sort of see that that's what happened from the symbols you know if this card is eliminated then add this card to this deck and then that card comes up it attacks so it's oh okay that's what happens right so if you're willing to dig into the symbology and sort of the meaning below that then you're going to get a really lovely story sometimes out of it having said that the, the setting and the theme is very nice the aesthetics here it's got an annoying insert i, I don't like the insert in this and then uh, the box is really a lot bigger than it probably would need to be. I know that that's 
oftentimes just sort of tied to the uh, the price point. But it's a really big box. It is a card game. At the end of the day, this is basically a card game. So the box is big. The insert is kind of annoying, but it's got great card quality, like superb card quality. Very good bits. There's not that many, but the wooden bits are nice. And then the icons, uh, the, the iconography, the usage of that is well done. Rule book is good. There's a secondary document in there that breaks down some of the cards you'll encounter later on and some of the higher letters. Very nicely done. This is a good, this is a well put together product. You know, I just wish the, uh, like that big thing that holds your inventions is sort of like a cardboard structure. It's kind of pointless. Um, they're just padding out. You know, it feels like some of this is padding out the core box a little bit in, in bits. It's fine. It's, um... A little bit of a coin toss. Do you like that sort of overproduction in games? I sort of do. So it doesn't bother me too much, but I, I'm, I'm making you aware of it. Replay value. Some of the surprise in the game is going to be gone after you've played through those letters, right? I love that discovery. And I should definitely, uh, I would definitely say don't look through the cards ahead of time. Save the surprises of what those cards are hiding from you for later on. And then, you know, you might even find that wolf you got to slap or what have you. Uh, and then get attacked. But um, some of that will be lost once you've played through the letters. But there is a lot to explore in this box. And and you can come back to that. And it's, you know, something you've played before doesn't necessarily now become boring. Because you know what the surprises are. Sort of the traps set out for you. It's fine. It's got great replayability. It scales well. I like, I like the way that works out. The game arc. Sometimes the game can suddenly come to a, an end. You you sort of go you you can ramp up to an to a, both a win or a loss kind of quickly, and you go oh oh that's it. But it's mostly got really good progression at the beginning. You got your two characters. You suck at everything, and you are going to be flipping a lot of cards and not being able to take down stuff. Right, uh, collect stuff, take down baddies, all of that. But you go through a couple of days. And now you're getting good at things. And I love the way that works out. I just love a game where you start with very little. And at the end, you look and go, this is mine. Look look at all this stuff. So this one does that. The ease of play. Maybe a tracker for the different symbols that you collect would have been nice per player. By that, I mean, like, later in the game. This is maybe just, like, the last third of the game. You'll flip over a, a mammoth or something and go, okay, I need, to, I need seven of the spear symbol to take this guy down. Okay, so I've got one on this one tribesman, and then I'm holding a spear over here, that's one more. And then, oh, this card here gives me one more. Okay, and then if I get your help, just don't do your card. If I get your help, you got one, two, oh, we only have seven, or we only have six between us, or whatever. Or maybe seven, and we needed eight. Maybe a little trackers for that stuff would have been nice. Maybe I'm overthinking it, though, but, um... You know, that, that might have been a good idea. In any case, it's it's easy to play. The game has a little bit of a strange cadence because the days are, like, really long, right? Flip a card, do the thing, flip, do, flip, do. And then, like, the night phase is just like, okay, they eat. Next. Shuffle. Do it again. Uh, it's mostly a day. Like, the night is a very, very tiny part of the game. But, yeah, no, it's good. It's smooth. It works well, you know? it's 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 easy to get into. Lastly, Tactics, Luck, Strategy. It's an interesting mix of stuff, I'll tell you. Mechanically, this is an interesting game. It's got some push your luck in it with the cards and the not knowing what the front has, but you get to see the backs. It's got some nice cooperation. I really like the idea of like skipping my card to help you on yours. I, I really enjoy that. It's got some... Um, yeah, progression is good. The a little, again, storytelling stuff is good if you look for that. Overall, I, I like this game a lot, like I said. And it kind of reminds me of two games, okay? This might not be helpful for a lot of you if you're not familiar with these games. But it reminds me of two things sort of coming together. It reminds me of Robinson Crusoe, Adventures in the Cursed Island. Similar ideas, right? Build weapons, gather stuff, eat, sleep, whatever. So it's sort of like a condensed down version of that in many ways. It also reminds me of this game right here, The Lost Expedition, be from, from a sort of storytelling point of view. This is also just a bunch of symbols, chains of symbology, that if you look at it for a moment, you go, oh, got it. So that snake bites me, and I lose 
two whatever, and so that sets me back because I'm wasting a day healing from the bite. Okay, that's what I mean, right? So you have to sort of interpret symbols and turn them into story. This one does it, Paleo does it. I don't necessarily dislike that, but it is one sort of one extra step in your in your head, okay? So there you go. Like I said, it's neat. I'm a sucker for co-ops anyway, as I mentioned. This is a, a good looking one, a nice setting for a co-op, which I really enjoy. And uh, there's a lot of content in the box right here. This is gonna get a strong eight out of 10 from me. That is a seal of approval. I recommend it. Um, like I said, there's a couple of things that are a little annoying and overproduced. That rack, the large cardboard boards don't do don't do a whole lot. They barely fit back in with that rack built also. But those are minor things. The game is great. And I think you're really going to enjoy it if you are someone who loves co-ops where you can have very clean moments, very specific moments of helping each other out. This one does that. That's great. Paleo. Thumbs up from me. I really like it. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.